Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's emergency teaching number 10. Today, we will be discussing the Arab state's unbounded heroism in relation to the genocide in Gaza. My name is Bassam Haddad. I'm your host, and I'm joined by our experts, Sinan Antoun, our cultural landscape expert, and Adil Iskandar, our media landscape expert. And myself, I am the social science expert. Despite the widely popular claim that nearly all Arab states have been generally absolute pieces of shit when it comes to lifting the right or any finger to challenge Israel's genocide in Gaza upon meticulous inspection, however, one finds embedded valiance, bravery, and sheer heroism in their carefully deliberated stances. Everywhere you look, I mean everywhere, we see Arab states trampling over each other to stand up for Palestine in what is called Waqfet Izz. Yawiz. Join our illustrious team of experts, the hosts of the podcast Three Arabs and, which will probably never be recorded, in highlighting the Arab state's valor even while they are not oppressing and killing their own people. In the immortal words of Mudaffar al Nawab, Ma awsakhana, ma awsakhana, ma awsakhana, wa nukabir, la astathni ahadan, ya awlad al. Beep! Welcome, Sinan and Adil, to our very important teaching today, given that everybody is so excited about what fellow and brethren Arabs, Arabs and Arab states are, especially Arab states, are doing for Palestine. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me start with asking our media landscape expert, Adil Iskandar. Adil, as our social media landscape expert, share with us your thoughts on the limitless support of Gaza by Arab states. Thank you so much, Bassem, for this amazing opportunity. I'm thrilled because this is one of those few opportunities where we get to acknowledge remarkable work that's been done. Um, as media experts, we scour headlines and especially official statements from governments to document the extent to which we contributed to the incredible work uh, of supporting Palestinians. Let me first start off with, uh, with Saudi Arabia, right? Saudi Arabia has shielded Gazans from genocide with its cunning use of words, words like condemn, reject, disappointed, and especially the word disappointed. This has proven more valuable than anything else prior, especially when it comes to uh, its replacement of humanitarian aid. But no Arab leader can match the gravitas of Saudi Crown Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salman, who on two very critical occasions exercised his characteristically strong man stares to cripple Israel's genocidal machine. Hala wallah, barakallahu of course, Egypt, uh, sharing a border with Gaza, successfully delivered a whopping 2.5% of the humanitarian aid destined for Gaza into the Strip. Gazans expressed their immense gratitude to their brotherly neighbor for its excessive generosity and insisted on returning some of the surplus aid. As we say in Egypt, Tislam al Um The United Arab Emirates should not be excused from this because UAE it can be credited with probably the most creative and sustainable long-term strategy to support Palestinians. Over the last five years, the Emiratis have created a safer haven for Israelis in Dubai than Israel itself, which really is a clever and unexpected plan to depopulate Israeli settlers from the occupied West Bank. And this, of course, deserves both acknowledgement and immense gratitude. The Sultanate of Oman, of course, not to be forgotten, sent a very large shipment of Nintendo Switches featuring the latest edition of Minecraft with customized Omani sword-clad warriors to defend Gazans and enough Minecraft credit for Palestinians to rebuild Gaza on the game platform. Thank you so much. Um, the country of Morocco, not to be outshadowed and outshined by others, is at least seriously considering a United Nations General Assembly resolution calling for Israel to be nice. Still in its 82nd draft, the resolution is coming quite well, 
according to some sources. But in the meantime, until this resolution is finalized, Morocco's leadership took drastic measures to significantly cripple Israel's military capabilities by observing a full cannabis boycott of the country. A senior government spokesperson addressed this in a joint press conference where he cited that this BDS action is an effective strategy in reducing the number of IDF hits. Israeli official sources are said to have been blitzed by the sobering news. Not to be left out, Tunisia, known for its very staunch pro-Israeli positions, went to great lengths to support the ICAJ, ICJ case against Israel. Just ahead of the hearings, Tunisian government valiantly protected the life of its own lawyer, Shaoui Tabib, who was meant to represent Palestine at the ICJ by preventing him from traveling to the ICJ. We have confirmation that Tabib is in fact safe and sound in the comfort of his own home and far from the harrowing hollows of The Hague. We're staying in North Africa for the moment with Libya. Despite buying Israeli arms, the North African country saved countless Palestinian lives by promptly firing its foreign minister after word got out that she had a routine meeting with an Israeli diplomat. Thank you so much, Libya, for that. Very, very uh, dignified stance. In Mauritania, Mauritania lodged an official complaint that it is too far geographically from Israel for its verbal condemnations to have any real impact on the ground and has requested an immediate relocation. This relocation is being examined as we speak. The Comoros, the president of the Comoros, Azali Asumani, says that his people understand very well the predicament of Palestinians. He says, I quote, our plight is one. Palestine has been erased from the map while no one can find us on the map. This, of course, is worthy of both empathy and solidarity is felt. Djibouti, a small nation in the Horn of Africa and the, at the Gulf of Aden and a very critical passageway to the Red Sea, the country took a strong and principled stand on the US and UK attacks on the Houthis and the Yemenis. The country's president met here with the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, where he shared what he described as some reservations with Blinken on the conduct of uh, these operations. Those were shared on a paper napkin. The paper napkin uh, is currently being examined for authenticity. Somalia, Speaking for the first time since a recent injury, the president of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, reassured everyone that the plight of Palestinians is atop his agenda. He had strong words of solidarity, where he said, of course, I'm not a young man, but alhamdulillah, I'm healthy. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't stay up late, so alhamdulillah, I'm healthy. We're grateful that you're healthy and that you continue to play that important role for Palestinians. Bahrain, King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa interrupted his regular schedule in light of Israel's attack on Rafah yesterday to attend an emergency golf tournament. The golf tournament is said to be making progress towards reconciling uh, Palestinian plight. The Gulf state of Kuwait, home to the world's strongest currency, the dinar, has chosen the moral high ground by investing massive amounts of state funds towards making Kufiya designed face masks readily available to shield Palestinians from both Israeli fire and rampant contagions. A member of, of parliament familiar with the plan added that when not worn, the masks can also be used as slingshots to resist IDF attacks against Palestinians to rousing applause from the other MPs. Qatar, the most committed supporter of Palestinians in their plight against occupation, apartheid, and now genocide, called on the U.S. to stop funding the Israeli military and instead redirect the military's resources to expanding its existing U.S. Air Force Base and American Central Command offices at al uh right outside of Doha's capital. Of course, a very, very admirable position to hold. And of course, not to be overshadowed, uh, Jordan, no country has more uh, knows more about the displacement of Palestinians than Jordan, which is home to around 3 million refugees from previous wars and conflicts. For this reason, King Abdullah of Jordan, in an attempt to derail Israel's plans for another Palestinian Nakba, 
deployed his most powerful weapon, his extraordinary use of the British accent and a thesaurus. The turning point in the conflict came when the king uttered these groundbreaking words on, uh, at the White House yesterday. And I quote, <clears throat> we must together, along with Arab partners and the international community, step up efforts to reach a ceasefire in Gaza and immediately start working to, to create a political horizon that leads to a just and comprehensive peace on the basis of the two-state solution. Allah alik. Um, this is just a preview, honestly, this is just a preview of some of the critical headlines demonstrating the remarkable work being done by Arab states. There is plenty more and we're just scratching the surface. A detailed media discourse analysis is necessary for us to continue this research. But in the meantime, I pass it on to our social science expert, Bassem. Thank you so much, Adil, for uh, your really remarkable commentary that addresses what is going on in the region in regards to supporting Gaza. I have uh, quite a bit to say, actually, regarding the heroic attempts uh, to save Palestinians. In addition to what you have shared, again, Qatar too has made important strides in preventing the, the decimation of Gaza. Instead of holding 64 sporting events in its new multi-billion dollar stadium complex throughout the country, it is holding only 48 events. Yeah. We can't underestimate the impact of mourning a few extra days on Israel's bombs. Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, has been in the forefront of countries defense against Israel's genocide. The Saudi regime has had strong words against Israel last week. It demanded that Israel ends its genocide immediately with no delay so it can resume the normalization process with the genocidal apartheid settled colonial state of Israel. Mahlouin at tatbiyah Also, fearful that the war might spread in the coming months beyond Gaza towards the region, notably Lebanon, the Saudi government established an entirely new governmental department to resettle, reallocate, and redivert the summer plans of Saudi citizens from Beirut to Istanbul. The emblem of the effort is called no Saudi vacationing family left behind. Egypt is a whole different story. Given its proximity to the killing and the responsibility it has held historically regarding Gaza, the Egyptian government is so adamant on preserving the rights of Palestinians to remain in Palestine, thereby subverting Israel's plan of ethnic cleansing and depopulation, that it has equipped its soldiers on the northeastern border with ample ammunition to shoot any individuals or families who attempt to cross the border into Egypt without prior permission acquired through a meticulous application process on their website. And the URL is given throughout the globe. And it's actually www. Ta'ala, 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 wa ta'ala dot madgish. Jordan was another proximate special case, lambasting Israel day and night for its genocidal campaign against Palestinians and its attempt to depopulate Gaza. The Jordanian government had a hissy fit when it heard, the Palest when it heard that Palestinians from Gaza and later potentially the West Bank can easily be resettled by Israel into Amman or in Amman. If there is one thing that will actually cause the state of Jordan to use its military might against Israel, God forbid, it's having one more Palestinian living in Jordan. And now Syria, tired of killing its own people for years, along with everyone else and their mother who entered Syria and supported the killing directly or indirectly during its uprising, the Syrian regime for once did the moral thing. It opted for absolute consistency in its offensive strategy vis-a-vis -vis Israel. Namely, it decided to continue to uphold the world record in maintaining the Israeli-Syrian border as the safest place in human history since 1973, opting instead to outsource resistance to those willing to fight, namely Hezbollah. With this, 
I end my commentary on the valor of Arab states in relation to Gaza, and we will move now to the cultural landscape specialist, Sinan Antoun, who will share with us his thoughts. Thank you, Bassam. Thank you, Adil. Uh, once again, look, um, I, I beg to differ. Now, most Arab media outlets are state-owned or owned by members of ruling families. And due to the high standards of professionalism and integrity and to avoid any conflict of interest, these media outlets often refrain from highlighting the heroic and great efforts of Arab regimes to support their Palestinian brethren. A lot of hard work and creative resistance takes place away from the limelight and behind the scenes. So let's get off our high horse and give credit where credit is due. I don't have time. We don't have time to list everything, um, all the heroic efforts and clandestine operations, but I will mention just some. I don't know if we can uh, watch this clip now, Bassam, or are we going to leave it later? We can watch it. Let me cue it. We might have to leave it for later. I one second. כן לרר השבוע, חוטים תקפו שוב בים האדום, והם ממשיכים לסגור את אחד מנתיבי הים המרכזיים בעולם, תעלת... I think we have an issue. Okay, I mean, this is from Channel 13 in Israel, and it just shows the uh, transfer of goods from Dubai, uh, through Saudi Arabia to Jordan and then to Israel. Now, I know what you might be thinking, and maybe you, having heard this, just join the chorus of those who have criticized the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan for sending or allowing the passage of truckloads of food to Israel while Palestinians in Gaza are dying of hunger and being bombed around the clock. But I urge you not to be fooled by appearances and not to jump to conclusions. A spokesperson from the Office of Duplicity and Depravity in the Arab League revealed to me that none of the food being sent to Israel is that fresh to start with or gluten-free. There are not, no items that are keto-friendly or paleo even. And some cans have a 2024 expiration date. Moreover, these convoys and cargoes, he asserted, are akin to missiles and drones and they are part of a long-term gastronomical warfare that is wrecking havoc on Israeli stomach and diets and will bear fruit in the coming decades. Just you wait and see. Now also, don't fall for or be fooled by the smiles in front of the cameras. Arab rulers and tyrants are seething with anger, and it has reached a tipping point. This past Wednesday, Valentine's Day marked a major fork in the road, an epistemological break. It was the first time since 1948 that a long-standing tradition came to a halt. Breaking from a tradition his predecessors and ancestors followed and cherished, an unnamed Arab crown prince did not send a Valentine card to the Israeli prime minister for the first time since 1948. Not only that, he sent a very angry card, very defiant and very courageous. And I managed to get a copy of the card. I don't know if we can show it, Bassam, at least the card. Look at that. Habibi, you are not my Valentine, right? And then at the end, I guess this scribble, sorry, I had to do this, call me tonight and exes. But anyway, let's, let's focus on the main text. Habibi, you are not my Valentine this year. Um, other Arab rulers have mobilized in very subtle and creative ways and are fighting Israel on different fronts and where it really hurts, right? The Achilles heel. 
The ruler of Dubai, known for his love of horses, who wisely spends millions of dollars on this hobby, sent firm orders to the jockey riding one of his horses in a race, telling him to tell the horse to kick a horse owned by an Israeli oligarch as they were competing and drive them out of the race. Unfortunately, the horse did not listen to his jockey's orders, but he was ordered to try it again in a year when there is another competition with that Israeli horse. Now, there had been plans to welcome Israel to the warm and cuddly bosom of the Arab League as part of the normalization process. But Israel has squandered, foolishly squandered that distinct privilege by killing more Palestinians than previously agreed upon in the Abraham Accords. A few weeks ago, several Arab foreign ministers sent the Israeli president a formal notice indicating that Arab regimes will only allow Israel to have observer status in the Arab League after the genocide is over. Israel's full membership application would only be considered if it refrains from genocide for at least 36 months. Israel was also warned by moderate Arab regimes that for every 10,000 Palestinians it kills, normalization will be delayed by six weeks. There is so much more, but you know, this is, I think this, this really tells you where the Arab regimes stand and how courageous they are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sinan. Thank you very much, Adil, our media landscape expert and cultural landscape expert. Before we break, I'd like to ask you if you have any other thoughts on the matter. No, none for me. Thank you. Congratulations. Me wait, wait, wait. You guys, you guys. I just heard. What? The Sultan of Oman discovered that there is a genocide in Gaza. And he's super, super pissed. Wow. Yeah. This is a game changer. It is a game Let's go, we'll 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 go,